Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to discuss a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a while and it's it's something that interests me and I hope it interests you guys. Um, the main topic today being is a Hackintosh more powerful than a Mac? Now I'm going to go out on a limb and say I believe so um, because you can change a Hackintosh at will and Mac's hardware if we're being honest has always been terrible. Uh, not necessarily terrible but behind the times if you will and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that right mac is a is a sleek product they make sleek products they're a sleek company um, that runs an operating system that doesn't require a lot of resources so for what it is it's fine but if you're looking for video editing uh audio production things like this you need power and I'm not gonna go out and spend $3,000 on an iMac or $6,000 on an iMac Pro. The Hackintosh behind me here is the same Hackintosh that we built in the video build guide for the Black Friday Cyber Monday budget Hackintosh build. Um, the SM BIOS lists it as auto-detected as a MacBook Pro, MacBook iMac Pro, um, which it isn't quite. This is a six core 12 thread, whereas the iMac Pro is an eight core 16 thread, I believe. So the closest thing that I can find to this machine right here is the 2018 iMac that has the six core 12 thread, uh, but there are some differences between the two. But I will be taking this and benching it against the iMac Pro and a couple other iMacs that I can find today. So I'm gonna be running Cinebench and I'm going to be running uh, Geekbench. Hello? Oh, no way. Sleep and wake work. That's neat. So before we start the benchmarks, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my latest projects and content, and let's do the benchmarking now. Let's go. All right, so we we're just gonna run the free version of Geekbench, um, just the CPU test, and we're just gonna start that up real quick. Uh, let it play through here, it runs through some things, um, then we will run the Cinebench score as well. Being a 6 core processor, I assume this to uh, not take very long, but you never know. And then of course, well, results come up, I will be comparing the two. Um, well, I will be comparing this machine with um, the iMac Pro in the iMac that is closely suited to this machine here. All right, and the Geekbench just got done. We are loading the results. My memory card uh, got full there, so we missed a little bit of the uh, of the test, which wasn't really going on crazy anyway. Um, so for our single core score, we got uh, 1,018. And for the multi-core score, we got 5,482. 10 cores, 8 cores, 10 cores, 18 cores, um, 8 cores. So, so a late 2017 iMac Pro is something that we... Oh, I lost my results. It's something that we compete with. Um, by about 200 score, actually, which is nice on the single core. Um, and then if we go back here and look for the multi-core score, I think they actually do beat us in multi-core because we do have um, two less physical cores, at least. Two, four, I mean, you know, 12 less than actual amounts, but the kind of baseline iMac Pro from late 2017 is kind of what we, so 5,037 on the multi-core down here, um, that is kind of where we compete, right there. So for about $250 that I spent on this, um, I'm getting the performance of about a late um, 2017 iMac Pro, which more than fine with me, if I'm being honest. Next, we're gonna run Cinebench. All right, so we got Cinebench R20 up here. We can kind of see um, I don't think we're gonna compete with that top guy there at all, or, or Threadripper to be honest, but this will be just a fun test to run. I don't know if I can actually check to see against um, other Hackintoshes here, but we're just going to run Cinebench on the Hackintosh and see how well it does. Uh, anyway, 
I don't know how long this one will take. <laughs> On an old MacBook, it t took literal, literal hours. So this is actually kind of cruising way faster than, uh, than that one did for sure. So it took about two minutes to render it up and we're kind of middle of the pack here. Um, so we kind of score under the Xeon um, CPU at 2.7 gigahertz. That's a 12, 12 core 24 thread, but we, uh, we outscored a 12 core 24 thread, the X5650. We outscored the i7, outscored the i5. Obviously, um, Ryzen is way better for multi-threaded uh, processes. Uh, Intel is still on top for gaming, but because this is a uh, Hackintosh slash editing rig, of course, uh, this is basically an editing rig. So workloads instead of gaming is what's done in this machine. Uh, so I'm completely fine with going uh, Ryzen. So a cool 2711 on there. Okay. So, so did I find my answer? I think I did, to be honest. Obviously, Apple, I love you. The problem with your product is the price to performance is just ridiculous. Um, so we saw in the Geekbench, the comparison between my Hackintosh that I repurposed some parts for, so I paid a total of 250 for, and how that compared to a late 2017 iMac. The baseline iMac Pro um, goes for what still two thousand dollars, eleven, fifteen hundred. I, I don't know. It's still over a thousand dollars in comparison to the two hundred and fifty dollars that I spent, or the five hundred dollars that uh, it would have been if I would have had to rebuy every part. Then yeah, I strongly feel like. I, I got my answer. Um, like I said, Apple, I love you, but your your prices are, are just way too, way too expensive for the outdated hardware that you use. And then when you do use current hardware um, and, and hardware that is that would be you know good for the purpose that you're creating it for, you, you go ahead and, and charge six grand. Um, for example, the the Mac Pro coming out this year uh, or this next year is going to be baseline like six thousand dollars, and I could probably build one for twelve hundred. I mean, with everything in it, twelve to fifteen hundred dollars, maybe two thousand. Still, when we're talking about that six thousand dollar price point, I mean. If everything works, why not? Why not build a Hackintosh if everything works? The only thing that doesn't work on this machine is iMessage and FaceTime. And do I need that when I'm editing this video? No, not at all. The App Store works, the music app works. iMessage and FaceTime, literally the only thing that doesn't work. I didn't know if Sleep and Wake worked earlier, but obviously we saw it and it did. So that's neat. Now, building a Hackintosh, requires some patience and it is and can be annoying now i got lucky this machine installed the first install and it just worked um, except for the store and music i had to do some finagling to get that fixed but it worked um the very first time it literally took 45 minutes to make this hackintosh which was absolutely great it doesn't always happen so that's fair warning but is a hackintosh better than a mac Maybe, I don't know. I like, I, I love Mac, but uh, I, I ain't loving them price tags. You know what I'm saying? I love my MacBook. I got it refurbished for still $400, um, which is insane for a, an older model and refurbished, and it was still $400. That's crazy. And it's a 2015 and only has a dual core i5 in it. I could have bought a laptop with a uh, quad-core i7 in it for half the price, but I like Mac OS. Windows for gaming, Mac OS for productivity and things like that. Easy. Do you guys think it's worth it to build a Hackintosh over a $1,500 Mac if you can get it for $250, $300 instead of $15, $2,000? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe to stay updated on all my latest content. If you like the video, Go ahead and like it and I will see you 
in the next one.